I am the happiest that I've probably ever been <laughs> in my adult life, enjoying what I'm doing every day. <laughs> yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah, they are. They're really cool. I'm Finn, I'm 27 years old, and this is my aquarium shop. Atlas Aquarium. Show us this river tank though. Alright. It is a work in progress still, I will just say that, but I am happy with the way that it's coming along. So the water comes up here, there's basically a weir, it overflows, has this nice waterfall area, we've got heaps and heaps of plants in here, lots of boosted philandra, mosses, anubias, ferns, comes down here, lots of rocks. I find the hill stream loaches like to breed in this rocky part here. But then the main area, or the feeding area I should say, is around here. <laughs> this is sort of where the hill stream loaches congregate. There's a little baby there that you can see as well. Wait, where's the baby? Just there on the edge of the rock. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. How cool. So the hill streams breed in here. There's some Corydoras. Oh actually they're not Corydoras, they're Sclerostrix. Oh yep. Uh, yep. Barbatus. They breed in here all the time. I've never seen a baby because I believe the babies are just getting eaten probably by the hill streams. And we got glow light danios in here. We so like you, to hide out on there. You bred these? I didn't breed all of them, but I bred some of them. There's a lot of life in here. I've been keeping fish since I was about three years old. My first fish tank was a little guppy tank that my parents got me. Saw the guppies breed and that was me hooked. And I started my own little business. First I started just on Gumtree selling fish. After about three or four years, I found that I had expanded as much as I could possibly expand whilst doing it from home, which I think is a similar thing to you. As I was looking for a place to rent out, I was working here at Atlas and Sebastian, the previous owner, offered for me to buy it for a good price. So I said yes and the rest is history. So this is a pink giant garami. They are a big fish when they grow up. <laughs> How long does it take for them to reach full size? Three or four years, I would say. And even then, they still keep growing. They get massive. 40, 50 centimetres. Cold water fish as well. You can keep them in cold water. This is our albino giant garami. Very similar to the one that we have back down there, but this guy's an albino, so he's got red eyes as opposed to a, just a pink. Not many of them around. He is a gorgeous fish, but he is very aggressive. <laughs> we've tried to keep him with other garamis, we've tried to keep him with other larger fish, and he just picks on them every time. So that's why he's sort of in the timeout corner. Yeah, he's beautiful. He is, he is. He's a gorgeous fish. So a lot of growing to do, but yeah. <laughs> he's gonna get massive. Our specialty in the shop is rare and exotic fish. We try and have a lot of fish that you wouldn't normally see at another aquarium store. And I think people continue to come in because there's sort of something new every week. In here, if we have any left, which it's hard to tell because they bury, is a really, really cool catfish. Before we got them, I'd never seen them before and I'd also never heard of them before. Let me see. There we go. Oh my gosh. So this is Achesis prashadi, a dwarf species of Asian riverine catfish. They do have a sting. I have been on the blunt end of the sting before and it hurts. It's like a wasp sting. Wow. Um, yeah. We did have some thoughts about putting them in the river tank because they would be perfect in there and they would love it, but they are little predators and I think we would end up with no baby hillstream loaches. <laughs> probably. How big are they? These guys probably five, six centimeters. I believe that's pretty much their max size. No, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I've never seen these. They're cool. They're kind of like, you know, uh, you know, like, what's yeah. that whip tail one? That the alien whip yes. tail? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Similar to that. Yeah. There, there's a fish called a Hara Hara. I think they're illegal in Australia, but they're a tiny, tiny little dwarf gut fish. They're like, I don't know, three centimeter max size. They're very similar to those. Like, yeah, these are legal, these are above board. We've got a cool little tank full of phantom glass catfish. And these guys are actually pretty cool too. I these saw these before, yeah. Klingobies or Stiphodon. This is a little male here and the other is a little female. They're not a fish that you see every day. Can you breed them pretty easy or? No, you can't because they need brackish to breed, unfortunately. This is our Danio tank with a few Tetras. I should probably point out we have tried to have all the fish from certain continents on the same racks. So this is our Asian rack. There is still a few stragglers that haven't been moved over. So if you see something that shouldn't be here, don't roast me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not a biotope. It's just it's trying not to... a biotope. None of them are biotopes, but they are all, these are all Asian fish. 
these are all your American fish, then we've got African and natives. It just sort of helps people when they're deciding, you know. It doesn't really equate to compatibility, but it definitely helps with water parameters and that sort of thing. So these are just Danios. We got your zebras, gold zebras, leopards. These guys are mascara barbs. They're very, very similar to a filament barb, but they get a little bit more color on them when they're big. They're really gorgeous fish when they're adult. And then you got your classic white clouds. I love white um, clouds. And there is also a plethora of loaches in here, which like to hide. So there you got your dwarf chain loaches and some black coolie loaches. You have to have a really tight lid. I noticed on all your lids, you've got the edge. We do, we do. Experience shot move. <laughs> it does make it hard to catch some fish because you can't scoop them up, but it helps with a lot of escapees. This tank has Pristilla tetras in it, which still need to be moved over to the South American side. And it's got your gold pan chacks. Unfortunately, all of our pan chacks have been picked through and I think there's maybe only one male in there. The males are obviously the most beautiful. Also got glass barbs, which are really cool, underrated. That's these guys here. They're a cool stalling barb and they don't eat plants, so they're good for a planter tank. And you got your long thin rosy barbs. Beautiful, elegant. They do eat plants. <laughs> oh yeah, actually, there's a pair of Nanakara anomala in here. That's the little female. Oh, there. you've got Nanakaras. Yeah, there's a big male in there. He might be in the cave. These they... are really rare, aren't they? Uh, they're fairly rare, they're fairly rare. So are they related to like blue Akaras and stuff or? I, I think they are, but they're a dwarf species. So that male is about as big as they get. They are a cool dwarf cichlid. And I think they're a bit tougher than an Episto or a Ram or something like that. That's the mixed barb tank. So you've got spanner barbs, Odessa barbs, tiger barbs, moss green tiger barbs, a couple of rosies maybe in there, and then some clown barbs. That's sort of the more boisterous barb tank with stuff that likes to nip each other and likes to destroy plants too. Next to it, you've got the albino tinfoil barbs. They're a cool barb. They just grow stupidly big. You need a big tank for them. I'd say a six foot minimum. And the uh, thing about having these big fish mm -hmm. and you need a big school of them, <laughs> it's a lot of food. It is, yeah. They, they're like a carp. They devour food. They're cool though. They are. These are sort of the more less aggressive, less boisterous barbs. You got ruby barbs, gold barbs, or I think they're called a... They're golden barbs, yeah, aren't a, they? They're, they're like a glow light gold barb or something like that. Five banded barbs, these guys, they sell quite well. People really like they're them. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, they're almost like a clown loach, <laughs> but yeah. a barb. It's a cool idea having them all together. Like that's yeah. kind of the best way to keep them because you can't keep them with other stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you might as well just keep them all together. I heard that you still go to the wholesale and actually pick up fish. Yeah, yeah. I, I hand pick all of our fish every week. I find we get the best quality fish when we do that. For things like betters, we get to choose the actual betters so we can choose the nicest of the crop. And also it allows us to sort of interact with the wholesaler too. It builds the relationship too. So this is kind of the South American sort of raffle. This, this is a bit of sorted, but this is all just stuff that does better in its own tank. Okay. It's either more sensitive stuff or it's just stuff that's maybe a little bit too expensive to just mix with everything else where obviously all of our main tanks are on one system. So they use the same water. We do occasionally get disease spread from tank to tank, even though we've got big UVs out the back. In these tanks, it doesn't happen. Here are some Corydoras leucomelis. They're uh, beautiful. Yeah, they are. They're really cool. And there's a big male peppermint in that cave. Hopefully doing the Lord's work in there. Do you got a female um, in here? There is a female in there as well. We got a couple of pairs recently. It's just been hard to get a, a regular supply of them. So I'm sort of hoping that we can just produce. I'm trying my best, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let me know if you have them yeah. because we, we struggle to get a regular supply. And then there's a female Dumbo better in there too. Gorgeous uh, guy. We did breed her. We had five from them, but we just didn't keep up the maintenance. So we didn't end up getting any to adult size. That's sad. Raising fish is a challenge. It is. You've just got to be on it all the time. <laughs> uh, you miss a day and that can be the entire batch gone. And there's a sumo loach there. I love the sumo loaches. Steal the show. I they love like to them. hide a little bit. So these are the orange flash? Yeah, Pistogramma orange flash. One of our staff breeds them. The males get a lot more colorful than that when they're in breeding mode. They're beautiful. Man. There's another peppermint in there as well. And there's a bunch of Burmese rominos, which I think are a really, really underrated fish. It's hard to see. That guy's starting to color up. 
when they fully color up, they're like a blue or like a purpley blue with an orange nose. I think nicer than a South American rummy nose, Tetra for sure. And those guys are actually a Rasbora species. That's funny, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not a, not a true rummy nose, I suppose you could say. The best thing definitely about owning an aquarium shop is being able to buy whatever fish I want guilt-free and sell them to someone else who can also enjoy them. I get my little period, my little window of enjoying them while they're in the shop and then they move on to someone else. This is mainly cichlids. There is a few odd fish in here as well. I've got a couple of goldfish. These are wakins or wakins. They're like a comet, but they have like a double tail. This is our angel tank. Yep. This is just assorted angels. Everyone likes a nice black angel or a, you know, Sapphire. And we've got Oscar tank. Oh, we got three Oscar tanks actually. We've got um, like the different sizes. Yeah, so these are all the smalls, the tigers, some albinos. These are a bit of a controversial one. Not everyone likes short body fish. I'm not a big fan of certain short body fish, but I think others do all right. These guys seem happy enough. That angel also has eggs at the moment. Yeah, there's an angel fish solo <laughs> laying. Yeah. Maybe she's paired up with the uh, Oscar. <laughs> And then in here we got chili Oscars, long fin, and a Azul peacock bass. Oh um, wow! Yeah. yeah, he's cool, but he doesn't get seen. No, <laughs> the, he's shy. The yeah. Oscars are the are the kings of the tank. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, he's pretty cool. And then this is sort of a little bit of South American, but mainly Central American cichlids. So here, probably the star of the show. These are Tomo cichlid tuba. I, this is the first time I've ever kept them. This was the first time I'd ever seen them. They're a really cool Central American cichlid. I don't know that much about them because I haven't kept them before, but they've been really popular and we've sold a fair few of them. And then we got convicts, everybody's first Central American cichlid. Or the, the first that they breed at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Neon blue acaras. There is a flagtail, a redfin flagtail. These are a really cool South American species. They get massive, they grow 40, 50 centimeters. In here we got some more Nanakara Anomala, uh, yep. dwarves. There's a little pair in there, so that's the female there, and then the males further at the back. Geophagus Brachybranchus, I believe these ones are. I think these are cool in general. We, yeah, we, we like them here. The Jack Dempsey's, and then some Black Narcys. Black Narcys weren't really around for ages. There's still not that many of them around, and they're super hyper aggressive when they're big. Uh, these are amazing, I love these. Yeah, these are some of the nicest fire males I've seen, at this size anyway. As obviously as they get bigger, they get redder and redder around the throat and they're, they're a gorgeous tank. I'm thinking about doing a little display tank with just some fire mounds in it because they're, they're a wicked cichlid. Oh, Probably, yeah, so they're marbled fenestratus. They get a lot of white on them and they're all completely different. I guess like a fingerprint, like no two are alike. It's amazing they don't call these uh, koi. They yeah. did sell so koi many more. Are some green terrors. Those guys are aggressive as well, but you can see they're getting a little bit picked on by the dovii, uh, the wolf cichlids, which are probably the most aggressive. <laughs> and then you got red devils, also aggressive. It's a business that you have to enjoy. You have to enjoy being in it. If, if you don't enjoy fish, if you don't love fish, it's definitely not the easiest way to make money. It's, it's unforgiving. Obviously, you're dealing with a lot of livestock that, you know, stuff happens to. And you have to be willing to sort of take losses where you have to and take the wins where you can. And these are actually some Australian bred rams, which we've been trying to get more of. Dude, they're um, amazing. I was going to say, these are definitely yeah. not imported. So yeah. Look at the colour. That's that's an actual blue ram there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a nice fish. That's what they should look like. <laughs> yeah. And they never do. In this tank, there's something really cool. There's only one left. That guy there, if you can see him, that's a Retroculus lepidifer, a fast flow riverine cichlid that really, really, really need good pristine water. They're almost sort of like in between like a goby and a cichlid. Like they sit on the bottom, they hop yeah, along. Yeah, he's is, awesome. He's wicked. And then in here we've got silver tip tetras, which are beautiful tetras. I, I don't think people appreciate them as much as they should. And then also some geophagus pellegrini, which are not really around. They're, they're quite a rare geo as well. But next to them is another rare geo. You've got your Albino Geophagus Tapajos, which are your redhead theater. Awesome fish, really cool. If we go up. I the... love these, man. <laughs> They're so cute. Look at them. The hollow log full of fire eels. <laughs> If I put a bit of food in, hold on, I'll get a little bit of There's black There's an algae wafer, but they're not tempted. Yeah, they're not that keen on it, but if we put some uh, black worm in, so these guys will hand feed if they're feeling it. 
Maybe they're not at the moment. No, they don't like my yellow phone. Yeah, they're camera shy. Um, they're beautiful. I love them so much. What a cool fish. They've got a lot of personality and they get big. They grow like over a meter long. And they're all fitting inside a cave that's 15 centimeters. Yeah. <laughs> These are another one of those tetras that I think are really underrated. And they're Paraguay tetras or panda tetras. I just think the contrast and their fins and their body is really beautiful. If we come over, this is sort of your African rack. So pretty much all of our African stuff is in here. A few maybe cool ones to point out would be uh, Senegal birches. Really, really cool prehistoric fish. They breathe air, they have a lung, can survive out of water for a long period of time, which is really good because they're also really, really fantastic at escaping. Yep. And many people will find them on the floor, but a lot of the time they can be put back in the tank and they're okay, if found quick enough. Also got some Congo Tetras, some big adult Congo Tetras. They're, they're really, really massive. beautiful. People don't really appreciate them because as you can see, we got some little ones here. They don't look like much when they're little. But as they get bigger, they're gorgeous. Same with your jewels. They're another really common cichlid. And we got a bunch of Mabuna and Peacocks in here. Everyone knows them, they're standard. Well, we got some Tiger Merchers down here. Oh yeah, show us these. They look like axolotls right now. Yeah. yeah, so when they're really small, they actually have external gills like axolotls. Some of these have it a little bit still, but I think depending on dissolved oxygen, they lose that either earlier or later. Very predatory. They're, they're also very cannibalistic when they're small. At this size, you're quite safe, but when they're smaller than this, they like to eat each other. Part of the reason why they are only ever sold in sort of small batches, I think. They spawn, but they're hard to raise. You know, that's the case. If something's ever expensive, it's either hard to get to spawn or yeah. when you spawn it, it's, it's impossible to raise. To raise. Yeah. yeah. It's the case with a lot of marine fish as well. Catfish, for the catfish lovers, these are Cynodontus petricola, but they're the gold form. So I don't actually have any standard ones to show you to compare, but your standard ones are like black and white. And these guys are sort of more yellowy, goldy. And just a few more Tanganyikan cichlids. Got some similar sort of shell dwellers in here. These guys, these are your princess cichlids or uh, Neolamprolegus prashadi. There's one albino in there. They have fry at the moment. I don't know if you can see them. Oh yeah, you can, um, yeah. This I'm is... I'm so keen for you to show us this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is natives. There is this, which is obviously not native, but if we start up the top, this is just your stock standard barramundi. Very cute when small. Make sure you have a big tank for them. These are Saratoga lycardi. Oh, uh, yeah. The southern Saratoga. What's the deal with these compared to arowanas? They're, these are the Australian species of arowana. Oh, cool. Yeah. These are your freshwater mores. I don't know how much you can see of them. There's a few in there. So they're found in Northern Queensland, but they're also found in New Guinea, where they're actually collected from. There's a full ban on collecting them in Australia. So all the ones that we sell are imported from New Guinea. Here we got your Celebes rainbow. This is sort of New Guinea as well in this rack, or, or Celebes. Yeah. <laughs> and some Bozeman eyes, which a lot of people come into the shop and they say, they're not Bozeman eyes, they've got no color. It's because they're on white sand. Yeah, basically. I know it's such a struggle. Yeah. Like even with your, <laughs> you've got these salmon reds yeah, here. Yeah, the salmon reds, which are basically salmon golds, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like they, you can tell they'll go really red the second they go into a yeah. dark tank. Yeah, I think the blue background also doesn't help. And I think the bright light doesn't help either. Uh, it's all right. They still look really healthy. And you know, once they get yeah. into a dark tank, man. Here you've got your Dubalei crimson spot rainbows. They're the ones that are local to our area and then some purple spot gudgeons and this is a little fire tail gudgeon which i think he might have come in as a feeder but he's sort of just been here for a long time and he's a resident of that tank these are blaherai rainbows the bigger ones and then you've got your turquoise rainbows yeah, which the are these smaller guys nice. and there's also a few little oddball back you'll ones. be struggling with these blaherais they're such like i've got big yeah. dark tanks and they're just generally <laughs> a bright one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so like in the even, morning they look amazing yeah they look awesome in the morning and then you got this little barramundi that has no dorsal fin. We call him the Ranchu Barra. Oh yeah. Um, and some more Saratoga. Now this is a really cool tank. This is sort of our display tank or our, our bigger fish display tank. This is the biggest tank that we have in the shop at the moment set up. This is a pair of black diamond stingrays. This is the female with the tail and the male or stumpy as he's known without the tail. What um, happened? When he was a pup, one of his siblings nibbled it off or bit it off and it just hasn't regrown. Um, it right. doesn't seem to affect him. We, we always like to say that he's kid safe or kid friendly. Yeah. This is a different species of giant gourami. This is a Borneo red. Doesn't look like much at the moment. Some people might say it looks like a gray, but as he gets big, he's just going to get redder and redder. We're keeping him. This is a mantilla ray, a different species. 
But yeah, the phrase are really cool. Phrase are awesome. Yeah. Coming in here and working five, six days a week has been good. It's been good for me. I find that I am the happiest that I've probably ever been in my adult life. And I feel like I'm progressing my life and, and enjoying what I'm doing every day. These are our cherry shrimp tanks and red cherries. These are actually yellow cherries, but under that light, they look very orange. In here, we've got blue cherries and there's a few blacks mixed in with them as well. Dwarfs is a tale of us boys. They're a really cool nano fish, which I think a lot of people have never heard of before. Just some super red crystals, some black crystals, and then some gold bees over here. Yeah, the gold bees are fantastic. The gold bees are nice. Let's go see your favorite fish as well. So you do have a marine section, a dedicated marine area. Yeah, this is our marine area. The lights are sort of turning off now because it's quite late. This is our big coral tank, so this is all full of coral. And then these are our marine fish tanks. These guys, these are my current favorite fish. They're called Blue Blanquillo. They are the most elegant fish. They sort of remind me a little bit of a cichlid in just their mannerisms. If I put some food in, you'll see how delicate they are with food as well. The marine section is really cool. I, I wish that I had the time to do marine. Yeah. I'm just still trying to perfect fresh. <laughs> like, oh, I, I never a, will, so. I, I had never really done marine before this, so it is a, a bit of a learning curve for me too. Oh my gosh, yeah they are, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. They're just so dainty, they're so gentle and, yeah. and delicate with what they do. I really appreciate you letting us come through your shop, and no especially problem. after hours and you know, Marino <laughs> made us a nice cheese board and everything, so yeah. thank you so much for being so inviting, Finn. I really appreciate it, Thank man. you for coming. You've got a great shop, and also, <laughs> Finn won't mention it, but he did come on my opening day and he did give me a gift and it was one of those giant karamis and I really did appreciate hey, that. Hey, so, no worries. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it's great to get together and do Thanks this. Thanks for so, coming. I appreciate it. Alrighty. See you guys. Bye.